she was text messaging, she was sipping on the coffee, and she was eating the bagel. And I said, isn't it amazing how many things we can do at one time? But you know, there's a challenge to that. If our young people cannot be present to one another, the very difficult question we ask is, how can they be present to one another? In order to be present to one another, we have to speak, a challenge to our culture which leads me to the third part of the talk today is that we need to become a listening culture once again. Faith enriches our culture and culture enriches our faith. And we all know that if you've been over to Rome and you look at the magnificence of the Basilica as you'll go through the Vatican Museum, you go over to Florence and you go through those uh, museums of, over there and looking at all the beautiful frescoes and the sculptures of Michael and Neil. You see, culture can bring people to that moment of transcendence. But faith is a gift of culture. Because no matter what is changing in culture, no matter what challenges us in the midst of culture, God is behind the experience. But in order to see how faith can enrich our culture, our culture has to discern how we can listen to God. There are challenges to our culture today. And that is that there are false hopes and there are false promises offered by our culture. The pop culture in particular. I don't know about you, but uh, one of the things I have to do, and I, I do from time to time, is listen to some the lyrics of the songs that our young people are listening to. And there's violence, there's darkness, there's hatred, there's a lack of dignity and a lack of respect that erodes the gift of faith. And I think if we could instill within the domestic church, within the gift of our family, where faith the seeds of faith are sown, we should hang on to those words of Paul in the Philippians. He said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I shall say, Rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything by prayer, by petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. So the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts, your minds, the knowledge of Christ Jesus. And this is the beautiful part of that letter. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if anything is worthy of praise. Think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. Those, those attributes, if we instill them in our family life, all those outside influences, you know, John's gospel is wonderful because it's the darkness, you know, battling uh, the light of the darkness, if you've noticed, that prologue and then all the way through. You know, there's so much darkness around, not to be negative, but there is. The reality TV shows, you know, Big Brother, all that kind of thing, people treating people terribly. And there's no sense of purity, loveliness, graciousness at all. But if we set that as the foundation to our life, faith can very much enrich our culture. You know, the, I think there are a few challenges right now in the United States of America in regards to faith. There's an attack on faith. And I have said so many times in my preaching uh, at St. John's as pastor, faith is attacked 
sometimes within the context of the church, within the context of the body of Christ. When people take political idealism above the will of God. I want to read one excerpt from Acts of the Apostles, and then we'll be very happy to learn how to wrap it up after that. Then someone came in and reported to them, this is the religious classes, the men whom you put in prison are in the temple area and are teaching the people. Then the captain and the court officers went out, brought them in, but without force because they were afraid of being stoned by the people. What does that say? The people wanted to listen to what they had to say. And even though these men were convinced that they knew better, they said, you better not stone them. Because these people want to listen to what they have to say. When they had brought them in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop preaching in that name? Do you notice what went on there? We do not acknowledge the name of Jesus. And they said, we gave you strict orders. We are trying to silence you. But then Peter said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. We must obey God rather than men. And say some of the challenges to the domestic church today and to our culture is that people are out of focus in regards to their faith. Somebody once said a few years ago, people within the United States must come to the point of knowing that they are Catholic Americans, not American Catholics. Americans, not American Catholics. What was he saying? God first. God is first. And I think, you know, people who are very intelligent, very uh, uh, much into reasoning, sometimes allow a personal idea or politic to get in the, the way of the will of God. Our politics should align our our beliefs in our God and what we think God intends for society. There is a danger, I'm the first person to say that, to align any party with God is very difficult and very damaging. But nonetheless, what we're called to do is to be people of that new evangelization in the midst of the struggles of our culture. So when we see a denial of prayer in public school settings, we should stand up as a majority and say the minority should not call the shots in that regard. How many times have people gone against that, that issue? Look at what's happened. There's an absence of prayer. In some of these great court, courthouses around the United States, tablets of the Ten Commandments, which actually tell us to be good people, have been removed. In the recent times, the attack on life and the desensitization uh, within the culture of death bring upon uh, the church a terrible attack. How did we ever get to the point from Roe versus Wade, for example, pull that out? People becoming desensitized about the gift that is within a mother's womb. It's a child. If it's not a baby, I heard that so one bumper sticker said, if it's not a baby, you're not pregnant. Let's think of God's word. You know, I've had so many people uh, come tearing at me after a mass where I talk about the evils of abortion. Father, you're being political. You're tearing it. I said, I'm not being political. I said, I'm preaching the will of God. That's why I'm here.
preach God's will and God's message of truth, love, and life. Well, I don't agree with you. You're just, you're being very political. I said, let me ask you just one question. I said, for one individual, do you ever think it's God's will that a life be destroyed? And the, her response, which was shocking that day, was like, I don't care what God's will is. She walked away. There's how somebody can totally divorce the, the reality of their life with the reality of their faith. Faith is a lived experience. It has to follow the discernment of God's presence and God's will in our life. Recent times, this whole thing on um, religious freedom. And I'm happy to see Ave Maria uh, filing the lawsuit uh, along with many other Catholic uh, colleges and institutions. It's a terrible thing when this great nation, which is prided itself on the gift of freedom will stand by and allow freedom to be taken from them. It's a terrible day. When we're being dictated, it doesn't matter by what administration, if something is telling us to defy our morality, there is something wrong. And we should be profoundly upset and angry that reality. Because if that doesn't stop there, where else is it going to go? You know, within Europe right now, terrible things are happening in terms of healthcare. Several countries within Europe have now legalized euthanasia. And Belgium is now working on a law that will allow children who are terminally ill to dialogue with their parents and ask someone to end their life. Children. There is a Liverpool uh, fan called, it's called the Liverpool fan over in England right now, and it was in the local newspaper when I was there visiting my family. The Liverpool fan is a plan that the NHS, National Health Service, put in place 